Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here in San Diego at WebEx One. This is uh, Cisco's collaboration event. I'm with Patrick Cornish, Senior Network Engineer of Bank First. Uh, uh, Patrick, uh, you're a WebEx customer. I think you're doing a talk later, uh, and I want to talk to you about that, but uh, uh, first, a uh, quick intro on yourself and Bank First. First off, thank you for having me. Uh, of course, Patrick Cornish, been here at Bank First for eight years now. Um, I'm, I lead our architecture team, working directly with our executives on actually migrating us over from a premise to WebEx Contact Center right now and leading our AI charge for our initiative. Uh, as far as the bank goes, we're about 15 billion assets. We're across, all across the state of Oklahoma and North Texas, or over 160 locations, uh -huh. serving about a half a million households. So you're a pretty big bank. Yeah, I, I like. <laughs> we like to think yeah, so. I actually came out of banking myself too. I was in. I started my career as a network engineer at a mid awesome. at a regional bank in uh, Maryland. So awesome. we, yeah, we're brothers here. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, awesome. So I, yeah. Now uh, you're talking about. You mentioned you're leading the bank's AI charge. Um, Talk about how the business has changed and why AI is so important for you today. Right, it's a it's a hot topic right now. Um, it, it it, it depends on who you ask and how you want to go about it, but there is some, some a lot of ROI there. Um, we kind of wanted to target the you know some low hanging fruit, um, it's balancing queries, things like that. How can we really optimize you know some of our call volume, make our agents a little bit more useful, uh, find ways to be more diligent in some of our efforts, um, but at the same time we want to maintain that right blend of like that human touch. So it's kind of yeah. finding out ways where we can really leverage AI, but still keep a uh, high white, you know, high, high touch, white glove treatment for our customers. Yeah, now do you envision a day where when customers call in, they'll actually, in a lot of cases, prefer a virtual agent? You know, I'm happy you mentioned it. That's a great segue yeah. for this afternoon, uh, and that's what my session is going to kind of showcase of how that first digital engagement will be. You know, AI agent, and a lot of things that you you know may need, maybe some simple tasks and, and inquiries and things like that, and things that's a little bit more complicated. You know, we want to hand those over. You know, to a seasoned human in the loop to make sure that those needs are met for those customers. But we, I don't want to speak too early, but that day is coming pretty soon. Where it's, we'll, it, we'll have that agent. The, in front. the analogy is interesting because I mentioned I came out of banking and mm -hmm. I was uh, part of the IT team that implemented the internet at the banks I was working oh, wow, at. Wow, okay. And back then, I remember my head of customer service saying, customers are never going to want to bank on the internet, right? They're always <laughs> going to want to talk to a person. And we still do. If we want to get a loan or do something complicated, we go in the bank. But for most of our everyday stuff, I want to check my balance. I want to send money to somebody, uh -huh. I do that online. Yes. And so I don't really see why the AI trend won't be any different, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, I really love your, your, your sentiment on that. Yeah, we yeah. really should talk more. Because <laughs> literally, literally it, it is no different, right? It's just this biggest boom in technology right now, literally where the internet came, yeah. and even how far telephony grew. People never thought that they would actually be using cell phones, a VoIP, or things like this, yeah. right? We're in a golden age of AI right now where we're able to use this and leverage so many tools. And it's still a little nuanced, so there's a little yeah. fear, but eventually this will become the norm. And it, and it will become where you won't know whether it's a human or it's an AI agent, it'll be to that point. And yeah. I feel like it's getting pretty close overall. And even Cisco's doing a good job of that. And we really value that partnership there yeah. as well. Yeah, and I think part of this too is, uh, frankly, do your agents like answering calls? They got to reset passwords and things? Right, right. Uh, yeah. I mean, who does really, right? Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, let's let's take some of that off of them and give them the more complex things. But at the same time, right, uh, there's different AI tools that can give that well, wellness break or different things to check in on to make sure they're doing well too and yeah. they're taken care of. So it's trying to find that, strike that perfect blend is yeah. always the goal. Now, while you have this vision of getting there, what are some of the challenges do you think in getting there? Yeah, well, you know, obviously being in financial rights, you, you got to make sure you're compliant, you know, you're following the right regulations. Yeah. Uh, there's some ethical things that you have to take in consideration, right? How do you hold an AI agent accountable the same way you would like a human, some things like that, right? Looking at your processes and just kind of looking at um, overall, uh, you know, where does it fit? Um, oh, we're, we're in the Midwest, so the adoption for some, some in AI is not as yeah. acceptance as others, right? Yeah. So it's how not do Silicon we, Valley, right? It, it yeah. is not. So <laughs> yeah. how do we still meet those customers where yeah. they want to be met when they have the fear of some of the taboo things they hear about it, right? So there's there's been multiple roadblocks and challenges throughout the process, right? And, and we didn't, you know, we took a crawl walk run. We didn't want to boil the ocean. We've kind of slowly got a good process and a plan in place to do those things. Uh, but it is challenging, but I still want to encourage other customers to do the same. And we're starting to have a lot of success with, with using AI. Yeah, no, I, I find it interesting that your title is network manager because if I go look around WebEx One, there's a lot of, uh, you know, workplace engineers, yeah. customer service managers. Yeah. How important is the role of the network in what you're trying to do? Oh my gosh, I mean, that, that is the backbone. I mean, that is the pillar for everything we want to do, right? I mean, that's how, we, that's how we're able to, across multiple digital channels, you know, reach our customers wherever they want to be met, right? Keep that same 
the goal is at the end of this, right? Once we finish our AI journey per se, that we can have that same human touch of when you come into the bank, that your same, your same needs can be met over the network, over telephony, whether that's voice, that's chat, um, that's SMS, whatever that is, we want to give you a plethora of options or even the mobile app to where you can meet, a, where we can meet you where you want to be met to get you served the best way possible. And if we can save you, if we can save you a drive from coming into the bank, we'll do that as well. Yeah, and I was talking to someone this yesterday that when you think about contact center operations, we used to live and die by things like average channel time. <laughs> now, once you go uh, uh, AI, mm -hmm. things like average channel time won't matter as much. And so have you, has the bank thought about how they're going to measure the effectiveness of right. the things that you're doing? Right. I will tell you, we, we might be uh, a little more tried and true. We, we actually, we, we still care about the average yeah. channel time, but to your point, a lot of those KPIs and those metrics, they're changing now, right? Yeah. We care more about sentiment. You know, we want to know, hey, was that customer happy? We want to know those CSAT scores, even if you don't fill out a survey, yeah. right? We want and to And you know, can do that with AI, right? And we can do yeah. that with AI now, right? And we want to look at our first call resolution. Let's look at, we've seen some really interesting stuff in the keynote that I, we were willing to kind of take back. Hey, is that agent too talkative? If he, maybe we should tone that back a little bit. Does he have the right knowledge now? Oh, we need to add some more to that. We need to add more knowledge to that AI agent. Maybe it's not as respect, responsive or as accurate as we need it to be. Yeah. And with AI, we can leverage those tools to not only home, enhance the human in the loop, but also that AI agent too. Yeah, now uh, we just finished watching the keynote. Were mm -hmm. there certain things in there that caught your eye? Yeah, I, I can only imagine now how happy our supervisors are going to be yeah, yeah. when you're going to have a single pane of glass where you can actually see the AI, the, well actually the, the AI agent as well as the live agent and all the metrics that we're going to be able to capture quality now, management, yeah. it's going to be phenomenal. You know, that that is something that I think is going to be a real game changer, uh, not just for us, but for a multitude of customers. Because right now it's, uh, it's kind of siloed in different spots where you can find that data to actually get that. So if we can just unify that and make that a little bit easier, I think we can really start targeting some of those metrics to have a quicker turnover to get a faster yeah. ROI. No one wants multiple panes of glass. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. And uh, and what about some of the other uh, AI in the UC side, no taking capabilities, task management? Yeah, that's, so that's really awesome. Yeah. It's very interesting because so being my, we, um, we're kind of a smaller team, uh, so we, we, we have a multitude of roles in a lot of different things we do. So even for me personally, I use the AI assistant now for whether it's um, live translations, I get the transcript, and the AI summary. So now I, don't, I no longer will even have to actually launch a meeting to get my AI notes taken, yeah. because a lot of the summarization, a lot of times I'm leading the meeting. So then I don't really have the opportunity oh, take to notes, take yeah. the notes. Yeah. So I actually launched the WebEx meeting to actually then get my notes, and it's been phenomenal. So now the fact I don't even need to use, you know launch a meeting to do that, we can walk into a person-to-person -person meeting, we have that. And and that was probably the biggest one. There were so many that yeah. it was going to be really great for us, but I'm G looking forward to that. And so you're a buyer into a G2 sentiment where he said that AI maturity is the first phase is, oh my God, it's going to take my job. Right, right. And now you're at the point with, oh my God, I can't do my job without it. Right. It, it, we're getting pretty close. Yeah. It's, getting, it's really close. And then I, and it's going to become the norm, right? We, at, for transparency in our environment, there's still some of that concern, right? Like, oh my God, it's going to take my job. But in reality, you know, it's not. It's, it's really meant there to be an A there, right? There, it has its place. Yeah, people said different that over point, the internet. The internet was going to take you. Yeah, right, right. And Y2K yeah. and you yeah, name yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there is a, there is a place for the technology and, and it's not going anywhere. And yeah. it's not, and it's here to stay, you know? So it, it, it is, uh, it would be, you know, really prohibitive if people really didn't adopt it and then yeah. kind to uh, start to learn it and yeah. integrate it. Now, from what I understand, you're a full stack Cisco shop and mm -hmm. a big part of the keynote and some of the talks going around here has been that Cisco can deliver everything from network to, you know, they have AI defense, they have a lot of security, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they have the, uh, you know, the calling platform, the meeting platform, mm -hmm. the, the CX product, mm -hmm. uh, having all that integrated together, how, how much did that matter to you? Well, it's really everything. Integration is really king. I know there was the days of the past where you maybe wanted a little few more silos or you didn't want all your eggs in one basket if you lost this or that. But in reality, even if you lost that, you, you're still in a pretty bad spot. You really want that integration end to end so you can know cradle to grave, the full, whether that's that call, that meeting, yeah. that transcription, is this no down, is, is, this, is this branch down, is this site down? Being Cisco through and through, we have the the ability to see that, and that integration really means everything. Yeah, and are you uh, excited about AI Canvas being able to? Uh, you know, I accuse Cisco sometimes as yeah. you know being the market leader in single panes of glass because yeah. they have so many. Right, right. But AI Canvas actually ties all that together yes. and lets you see yes. observability, security, networking. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really excited about it. I was here a couple months ago for Cisco Live, and they first yeah. um, debuted it with the new uh, security appliance and things. And I was like, well, that's nice. Uh, okay, I kind of see. It would really be nice to see this in other platforms and to be here today here and to yeah. get to see it. That is really going to be transformative, and it's all built generative. So then in real time, we're getting a lot of those dashboards, those insights. Yeah. 
Yeah. I like how we can actually uh, collaborate, bring multiple teams in and different people from different departments so we can get that resolution really faster you know, than we've ever ever have been, been able to do before. Yeah, all right, Patrick, well, I appreciate your time. Just one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, you're moving forward with AI. I think G2 said there's two types of organizations, companies that adopt AI and ones that fall behind. Mm -hmm. For those out there that are thinking about AI, mm -hmm. right, what's some advice you can give? Uh, I'll just kind of look at it like you don't need to boil an ocean. You know, just take it one step at a time. And he really identified, it's kind of funny that I'm really piggyback, piggybacking off a lot of that because I have a use case that I'm actually going to show this afternoon. Uh, I, w I don't want to give it away, but it's essentially something that's real to us, right? And how we're actually going to basically cut our handle time in a third by resolving this one issue, which last month was actually the majority of it. It was actually a debit card replacement need, right? So leveraging the AI assist, the you, AI you agent. You can talk in detail, but this won't air until after your Okay, session. okay, so it's actually going yeah. to demo the uh, AI agent where you authenticate them and then you need to pass it over to actually a human agent. And then the human in a loop actually gets help from the AI assistant to actually feed you the transactions, help actually generate a card with the address to send the SMS to the customer Customer to create that replacement, you know, for that debit card. So in turns, I mean, we're saving, you know, minutes on minutes, which is hours on hours, you know, and then dollars on dollars on dollars, and we're able to leverage that all, you know, with with the, you know, AI assistant and the AI agent, and that's just one use case, right? Yeah. It's no longer... So you're starting use case by use case. Right, yeah. and it's the thing too, right? I think the mindset needs to be, it's no longer, can this be done? It's now, how do we need to do it? Because we have so many disposal tools at our disposal that Cisco has throughout the, you know, just the, the AI ecosystem per se, that it, um, you definitely will want to leverage them, but just find things that's real to you. Don't do features for the sake of features. Find the thing that, that's most niche to your use case, and then find ways to build it, implement that, start from there, and then and the rest, you know, it'll yeah. take care of itself. Yeah, I call that uh, uh, chip shots, not moonshots. There you go. Right, if you look out ahead and you decide, I'm going to put AI across my whole company, mm -hmm. I'm going to transform customer service, you're never going to get there because it's too intimidating. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to just do these little steps, yes. one project at a time, you can measure the success, Prove it to your bosses, which is important as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you want to keep the C-suite and those stakeholders happy, yeah, yeah, you know, especially, yeah. especially in my line of work. It, it'll be good. All right. Anything else you want to add? No, I appreciate it. Thanks for your no, time. It's really been a pleasure. appreciate having you on. Sounds like you're doing some great things at Bank First there. So I'm happy Patrick Cornish from Bank First. I'm Zia's Caravalli from ZK Research. Seeing thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and also hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time on our next episode of Zcast.